Good morning and welcome back from, uh, <laughs> it's got to be Monday for me to mess this up. So simple. Good morning and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning live get together here on Facebook where we take a look at news from our city, Puerto Vallarta, our state, Jalisco, our country, Mexico. And we take a look at all your comments and suggestions and ideas on how we can have an awesome live here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English speaking locals we throw it in the mix and this is what we do we get together every morning except for sundays and we dish and we talk about these things and we say hello to one another and we have a generally good time every now and then we get a little wonky but that's part of the business it is the way it goes today is monday june 7th and we have excellent news for everyone but first if this is the first time that you're here my name is paco and you can let us know that you are new by writing your name, I mean, by writing the word new in your comment. And if you have something important that you wish to share, uh, just let us know by adding the letter Q to your comment. I'm all over the place, maybe because I'm happy. I'm happy because we have great news about vaccination. Uh, the vaccination for folks in their 40s begins tomorrow, and I'm going to have news about that. We're also going to have news about our electoral process. We don't have a specific COVID update from our governor, but we will take a look at some of the numbers from the national stoplight. We have um, news about Nayarit's former governor, um, I forget his name, um, who was apprehended finally after an eight month long chase. We have news about the drought. A lot of important news today. We don't have many leisurely things, but we have a lot of things you may want to know about. So if this is your stick, stick around, grab your favorite beverage. And as always, we'll go through the news and then we will go through all of your comments. Here we go. Okay, so just to give you the blow by blow, this past Saturday afternoon, it was announced that vaccination for folks in their 40s would begin today in our sanitary region, which, as you know, comprises Puerto Vallarta and a few surrounding municipalities. And I got all excited, but couldn't find any information to back it up. However, the information was updated this morning, and now we learn that vaccination for folks in their 40s will begin tomorrow. Yay, where is my applause? Here is my applause. Ah, there are a few procedural differences and we will get to those right away. This time around, and aside from folks in their 40s, vaccination will also continue to be available for pregnant women in uh, with nine weeks of pregnancy or over, and also for folks in their 50s that may have missed the previous vaccination campaign. We also learned that the vaccines to be applied this time around are AstraZeneca and CanSino. A major difference between one and the other is that the latter only requires a single application. And no, we don't think you get to pick and choose. Finally, whereas the past vaccination campaign 
uh, took place in Puerto Vallarta for all the surrounding municipalities as well. This time around, all the other municipalities of our sanitary region, which include Cabo Corrientes, Mascota, San Sebastián del Oeste, Talpa de Allende, and Tomatlan, they will handle their own vaccination at local places. This means that if you are in Puerto Vallarta, you get your vaccine at La Lija. Vaccination will take place starting tomorrow and will continue until the 11th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. Here is a map uh, to La Lija, which we have shown you before. There it is. It's in this little uh, sporting complex. And where is this? It's in the middle of nowhere in Lomas de Coapinole uh, behind Pitillal. And there is, come on map, you can update. It is Monday, don't be shy. There you go. So here's here's the city. Well, this is all the city, but here is the more known parts of the city, Marina Vallarta, the hotel zone, and so forth and so on. And La Lija is up here. We've shown this before. We will continue to show it so that you know exactly where to go. As in the past, I have already recommended to my friends that are younger than me, Logan, um, that you go tomorrow. Because remember, information takes time to trickle down. People don't immediately know these things because surprisingly and sadly enough, there are not that many people that actually keep in touch with the news as as vigorously as we do. So if I was in my 40s, I would go tomorrow. I would go tomorrow early. Uh, when I went for my vaccine, we got there um, at about 1 o'clock. No, we met at 1 o'clock. We got there at 1.30. 15 minutes later, we had already received our vaccine. So if this is your case, by all means, don't delay and go get your vaccine because it is it is a good thing. Unless you don't feel it is a good thing, and that's okay too. But for most of us, getting the vaccine is an extra layer of comfort and feeling that it's going to be okay. At least that's the way I felt. So that is um, what uh, I have to say. And John, I see a quick comment that uh, I will get to all the vaccine, the comments later. But this, um, the article indeed states that the Naval Hospital is also a site. However, there is no specification as to whether that site will only be for pregnant women as it was in the past campaign or if anybody can go there. So if you choose to go to uh, the Naval Hospital instead of going to La Liga, please do so at your own risk. Uh, maybe during the day we will see official um, updates to this information and we will definitely bring those up um, tomorrow, during tomorrow's broadcast. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have an update uh, from Governor Alfaro on the COVID-19 stats from yesterday. So we bring up the national map, which is valid for the next two weeks. As you can see, both the state of Jalisco and the state of Nayarit continue in the green zone. Um, more states like Baja California Sur and all these states, you know, Cancun and I mean, Quintana Roo and Campeche, Quintana Roo and Campeche, and this other state here, they all that switched back to the orange, which is thought provoking. We know that the number of cases is increasing in Colima, which is just south of Jalisco. So um, just remember, it is not over yet. And just to keep it real, I want to show you that as a reminder, that this is not over, that um, we learned through this other article that in the past 10 days, 100 more COVID-19 cases have appeared in Puerto Vallarta and 14 people have died. So you know what you need to do. We need to wear our face mask. We need to stay indoors. Nothing has changed, friends. All that has changed is all the carelessness that seems to be going on on the street. You know what you have to do if you wish to take care of yourself and your loved ones. Wear your face mask, maintain a safe distance, stay away from crowded places, and for that matter, just stay home if what you have nowhere else to be. Um, moving on, I want to talk to you about the elections, which is the other big topic of the day. Uh, the local elections. As you know, voting took place yesterday until 6 p.m. with the usual controversial incidents we've come to tolerate and um, 
and endure in Mexican elections, such as tampering with the votes and apathy among voters and voting locations that did not open on time and illegal incentives for voters to vote one way or another. That said, and compared with other places throughout Mexico, we are fortunate that our process was fairly uneventful here at Bahia de Banderas. The new mayor has to assume the charge on October 1st, and the new deputies will begin on November 1st. But who won? Of course, you're probably wondering that. Now, early results seem to favor both the Movimiento Ciudadano Party and the Morena Party here in Puerto Vallarta. This can be confirmed by looking at the live results, which I have here. And in fact, let me refresh this uh, chart so we can see that this was just updated. Um, 7,000... Okay, let me skip that part. The, so far, this is the percentage of, of citizens that went out to vote, 47%. Um, they're almost done. They're 69% done counting the votes. And we show here that Luis Alberto Michel Rodriguez of the Morena Party is the leading candidate for uh, becoming the mayor here in Puerto Vallarta. Maria Guadalupe Guerrero Carvajal or Lupita Carvajal was another favorite. She is in second place, and I actually read somewhere in social media that she has, oh gosh, I don't even know what the word is in English. When you say, okay, I realize I didn't win, well, she has done so, um, and everything seems to indicate that Luis Alberto Michel Rodriguez of the Morena Party, which is the same party as the president of Mexico, will be the new mayor. It is too early to explain what this means. It is too early to um, to uh, to break this down into things that we can actually understand. But I will volunteer this. We have always felt that Puerto Vallarta has had th conceded. Thank you very much, Logan. I was almost certain that that was the word I was looking for. I was not completely sure. Thank you for that. Conceded. Yes, she has conceded, at least on Facebook. Anyhow, we have always felt that the best years here in Puerto Vallarta have been those in which we have been in party alignment, both as a municipality, as a state, and with the federal government. So um, we are in alignment with uh, the president, which is, um, which is, of course, Morena, and, um, and of course, the, the state of Jalisco is more Movimiento Ciudadano. Um, again, I don't want to dive into this just yet. We're going to wait a couple of days just to get a sense as to what this all means and wait until people that are complaining about the results have finished complaining and so forth and so on so that we can get a sense as to what will happen next. Thank you for all the concessions. <laughs> Thank you, Logan, Liz, David, Lynn, and Rita for volunteering a correction when I asked for it. I appreciate that very much. Now, we continue with important news. After an eight-month chase through five states and in collaboration with the Interpol, former Nayarit Governor Roberto Sandoval Castañeda has been apprehended along with his daughter, Lidi Alejandra Sandoval. They are both wanted for their link with organized crime along with illegal appropriation of funds. And no, something tells me that he was not apprehended while voting, as this photo would indicate. This must be an archival image. If I had, was wanted for, um, if I had, if I was wanted for all these charges and I was being chased by the Interpol, the last thing I would want to do is to go out and vote. So this must be an older photograph. So now uh, former Nayarit Governor Roberto Sandoval Casañeda and his daughter will go through the motion of, um, you know, responding to these charges. And we'll get to see what that is like as we follow this bit of news in the future. Um, my last formal bit of news for you today has to do with the drought. Yes, we had lovely rain sometime last week, but it did not do much to decrease the increasing uh, drought problem we have throughout the country. Whereas the drought monitoring map used to show most of, has of the state of Jalisco in a single color, now several spots, let me bring it up, there you go, several spots 
have appeared in the southern part of the state, indicating that the drought is getting worse. Down here, when it's, it's close to uh, the border with Colima. So what can we do? Well, all we can do really is, because we cannot make it rain, we have to be mindful of our water use. Water is something that we take so easily for granted. Please take some time to think about what you can do at home to modify your use of water if you can, because this is something that, you know, we cannot do anything about until it starts to rain. Hopefully that'll be sometime soon. And speaking of, let us take a quick look at the weather just to see what we can expect at the beginning of the week. Ooh, that was a lot of words. Why is spring my favorite season? Because I get to torture everyone who has pollen allergies. That's what snarky weather has to say today. It is 26 degrees, feels like 29. Humidity is high, 81% uh, humidity right now. Our temperature in Fahrenheit is 78 degrees. There is zero chance of rain as of this moment. And the weather forecast for today tells us that we are going to have a humid and partly cloudy day with a high temperature of 32, low temperature of 23. Tomorrow will be humid and partly cloudy again, high temperature of 32 and low temperature of 24. Shower with a friend. I'm reading your comments on the side. <laughs> and Wednesday, uh, humid and partly cloudy again. And again, the temperature will be a high of 32, a low of 24. Uh, shower with a friend to save water. I love that. Okay, so yes, I'm peeking into your into your comments. We don't have leisurely news. Everything was pretty serious and formal today. So we're going to now take a quick look at your comments just to see who's in the house and where everybody is. Um, it's just another Monday in paradise, says Dave. Absolutely. Let's see. Meanwhile, it is a steamy south of Boston suburb for David. Dumphy, David, thank you so much for joining us from Boston, my former hometown. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, Gigi is in Nayarit, where there was uh, dry law this weekend. I hope you got your yourself properly cocktailed, if, if you cocktail. If you don't cocktail, then pay no mind. Um, uh, <laughs> Logan is all ready to get his vaccine. Good for you, baby. I'm so glad. Oh, and of course, I didn't mention this when I talked to uh, when I talked to you about the vaccines. It is always more fun if you go with a friend. So you know, get your buddies together and go as a group. You know, if one of your buddies understands Spanish better than you do, it's always fun to do it that way. That's the way I did it, and I was so very happy to go with friends of mine. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, look forward to be back in EZ. Emiliano Zapata moved on Saturday morning. I mean, on Saturday, I made up the morning. Dale, I'm so very happy for you. Um, I made up the morning part. I don't know why I did that. Buenos dias from Amapas in our first visit to a retirement condo, says Suzanne Logan. Congratulations, and I hope your condo is fabulous. Um, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else? Logan is, I literally have my documents in hand and I am just waiting by the door. Hold your purse, hold your purse. It happens tomorrow, but do go tomorrow, Logan. Um, I, you'll be happy that you did. Um, let's see what else we have. So sad that only 47% voted, nothing will change. Well, something will change, hopefully, David and, and Dave, and, and hopefully more and more people will become engaged in the process as times go by. Um, you are right. It is, it is sad that there isn't more participation. But I will say this time around, the whole electoral process throughout the country was very left very much to be desired. And locally, the candidates also left a lot to be desired in my very uneducated opinion. I am not an expert about these things, but it is what it is and we just have to learn to live with it. Um, where did all the, that rain go? Well, Lynn, you see it is not quite 
time for rain just yet. The rain season is just starting. We're not expecting it to start until later on this month. I think that rain that we enjoyed last week was just a freak rain caused by that tropical storm. Um, Blanca was the name, and we haven't had any new activity in the Pacific Ocean. So until we have more tropical storms brewing, and that's when we will be able to see more rain happening. Um, just another manic Monday news wise. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, I know a lot of people who will not vote because they believe all of Mexico's politicians and the government are corrupt. I really can't argue with them as at least locally, no one stood out as exemplary. Unfortunately, Catherine, you are correct. Um, but you know, politicians have, um, an opportunity to make a difference. I mean, our president, I'm not saying that Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador is perfect. He gets a lot of flack. And just in the last week, it seems like all major editorial companies from uh, and publications from, from the world um, decided to, to, to bash on our president. And, and I love that, that behavior of major publications in the United States and England and so forth and so on that feel the obligation to give their opinion about current affairs from other countries. But what can I say? You know, our president got majorly bashed, but it seems like his party is doing quite well in the elections this time around. But again, I don't want to get ahead of myself. It is still too early to see what is going to happen there. Um, and that is my, my news for today. Please take the water thing seriously. Uh, please uh, go get your COVID vaccine uh, this coming week, starting tomorrow. If you are in your 50s and you missed the boat last time, this is a chance for you to go as well. And I would imagine that if you're in your 60s and you've missed the two plus campaigns we've had, don't be shy. Go get it done. Uh, it is important. Um, and again, please be mindful of the fact that it's not over. It's not over. Uh, we're still in a pandemic. We're still expected to follow certain guidelines. Even if you see a lot of people around you um, not following them, you do what you think you need to do to protect yourselves and your loved ones. It is always a pleasure to connect with you. And I hope you have an amazing beginning of the week. I hope you'll stay kind, you'll stay well protected, and you'll stay happy as we begin another week in our life here in Puerto Vallarta. Tomorrow is Taco Tuesday. Yay, I'm hungry already, and I hope you are too. So I'll see you tomorrow, and if not tomorrow, I'll see you sometime soon. Have a great day.